Welcome back to another episode. In this episode I'm going to make a beehive hut. The beehive hut is going to house 18 individual beehives. It's a big, big hut to keep the bears from getting at the bees. And here I am at Cooksburg Lumber in upstate New York. This is my very first trip to the lumber yard. And uh, this is on a Saturday and I'm taking a few hours just to make the foundation or what is going to be the floor. This was a big project. I had done a couple of pencil sketches. I sat down with the the owner and we came up with a couple of ideas and I had a loose pencil sketch and an idea in my mind. And I had to build this in my backyard due to logistics and timing. I had to get started and it was made modular so that it could be taken apart and moved on a trailer in pieces. And so here you see me and Willie assembling what's going to become the floor. And I really wanted to just get this started just to get my bearings. So I just wanted to make the floor level it so I could start thinking about the rest of it. And we did this again on a Saturday afternoon. Each one of those pieces is 6 foot 4 inches by 9 feet. So it's 9 feet front to back considering the long sides of the front and the back. And each one of those floor sections, each one of those three floor sections are going to come completely apart. And uh, considering I used real 2x4s from the lumber yard, because the lumber yard only makes fresh cut lumber, fresh cut wood, all the wood is green, very heavy and wet. I didn't have strap hangers, which uh, the 2x4s would hang from. And so here I'm making pockets halfway in. So those are like one inch by two inch approximately by about three quarters of an inch thick or deep. And I'm going to cut each two by four to hang inside of those pockets. And that's uh, for a couple of reasons. Easier to assemble and gives it some strength. And here you see me using my very old Milwaukee circular saw and a hand saw to get those notches ready. And here you see why it makes it a little bit easier to put together when I'm working alone. But also gives it that added strength of the hangers. And I'm using outdoor uh, star key 3 inch screws. It's got the, the, star, the star key at the top. And I toenail all the screws and put a lot of screws everywhere. A lot of screws. And some of you might be saying, why am I only using 2x4s for the flooring? This is a very tight budget on this, and every little penny counted. And so I wanted to just use 2x4s. Knowing it was going to go against the floor, I could shore it up. Literally sits in the farmer's field. This is my old 1986 Chevy truck. This is the second trip to the lumberyard. And this is now on a Tuesday. So we had a little bit of work on a Saturday. Now... A full day on Tuesday, the day begins getting all the wood. This is David Welder, he's working with me on this. We picked up some fresh wood, then we picked up some plywood for the flooring, and this is Dave's drone. Just an aerial shot of my backyard, and you can see where we're at. And I started with the back wall. And keep in mind, everything has to be modular, so I'm making everything to come apart. So I'm making four frames that are going to be the same size, which is the width of 19 feet that's across the long side broken into four sections and thank god the weather was on our side we had four beautiful days to work on this and uh, the walls are getting board and batten style so these are going to carry the vertical boards that are going to make up the wall covering this isn't traditional framing again everything has to be dismantled <clears throat> There's me and Willie and Dave laying out the flooring. Just waiting for the flooring so that I could then put the wall up. <clears throat> we worked as a really good team. And we laid the flooring just across the three sections. And we didn't cut it yet. I figured we cut it once we dismantled it so that the thing would stay together nice and strong while we worked on it. You see how it's leveled there in my backyard. It's all cantilevered up in the air. 
We shorted up even more than from the first couple of shots where we just had some clamps holding 2x4s in place. You could see some piles of wood underneath the corners. And now he, these are two of the four back floor sections. Uh, I should say wall sections. And those corner braces are where all the strength is derived from. These are the, the three front sections. So we did the back sections at six feet high and the front sections at eight feet high. And you'll notice the front sections are kind of weird. They have those slits in them. That slit there right at waist high. That's where the bees are going to come into the top shelf and then at the bottom there's a slit. That's where the bees go into the bottom shelf. And to tie all the walls together across the joints we throw some 2 by 4 headers on everything. Just checking the diagonal, making sure everything's squared. Now these are the four sections that have become the end walls. One of those four sections gets a door built into it. You see the sun is going down on day one of the full build. Day one of a full build. And that's going to be the section where the doorway is. Now this is just a, more of the wall. And this is sunrise on day two of the full build. And there I'm putting in what's going to become the the cap of our roof, or the roof line I should say. And I always build everything in place and then cut it in half, or I build things in place and then cut off the trim. This is just a habit of mine. You see there I'm using the hand saw a lot on this project. I just make sure one end of the board is clean. That would be where the bottom starts and then I just put it up long and cut the top off. For me to run back and forth and try and get that angle, it's easier for me to just cut it in place. We use screws and nails. Of course we use the screws most often where everything had to come apart. Now a lot of those boards overlap joints so that when we take it apart and put it back together later, it just gives it more added strength. That pile of wood was huge and it really depleted quickly. And now I'm cutting all the boards for Dave. And we had to make sure, because the boards are all fresh cut so they're not all exactly the same width. So we had to cut them in pairs. We had to make sure we had to make sure the top and bottom board was from the same board. And they're just giving it an inspection. It was really nice to see this thing come together, considering it was kind of stressful. Just sheeting the side. We're going to get a batten on there too. So these are the boards and the batten covers the joint. This is about noon on day two of the full build in the backyard. Yeah, cutting the boards. Again, just another cool drone shot. Dave's got the DJI Phantom. And now I'm cutting the, the battens. These are going to be the individual pieces of board that are going to cover every one of those seams. You see me there nailing them in place using an air nailer. Again, I got to remember where we're going to take apart, and I'm going to leave those battens off and put them on place at the site. And just framing out the front. This is going to get a bunch of colors on the front. The client's assistants are going to paint that, and you'll see what I mean. This is the end of the day two full build, and now we're taking it apart and getting it ready for the morning delivery. This was fun. We didn't build the roof. We figured Dave's idea, which is a very smart one, which was to let's just wait till we build the roof on site. I was going to build the roof in sections, but we just ran out of time. It was a smarter decision to bring all the parts and build the whole roof there on location. There you see me cutting the flooring apart, pulling the floors completely apart, and now here we are the next morning pulling out of my driveway with super slow motion. And we had to make two trips because there was so much material. I didn't want to stress the, the transmission of my truck. 
and here we are at the property. This is a, a farm that used to be an airstrip and they grow echinacea here and these bees are going to pollinate the echinacea and the reason there's so many bees is because they're going to use the honey to make cosmetics somehow. And now here we're laying out the floor. You can see the the farmer there put the bricks in place. Those are going to be the pavers that keep the floor level. And they were actually really, he got them really quite level before we even put anything on them. He did a good job. I laid out a floor plan in Illustrator and sent it to him. And now here we are leaving the driveway with the six sections that are the three parts for the floor and the three parts for the facade. And they were so big I had to stand them up like books on the, sh on the trailer. The trailer's got a wooden floor, so I was able to screw things right to the floor to keep those six sections in place. And you'll notice that they're making a commercial too, so Dave was filming, I was filming, and they were filming. It was kind of fun. It's got a lot of coverage. And now, those floor sections weighed about 250 pounds each. They were the heaviest parts. And that's uh, timber locks. We're using timber locks toenailed into place. They're about eight inch timber locks and that really works well to pull everything together nice and tight and each one of these sections got considerably screwed into place now that they weren't going to go anywhere using those star key screws again you can see that airstrip now which is an echinacea field slapping all these parts together took about 45 minutes considering it took nearly two full days to build, 45 minutes to put it back together, it wasn't so bad. Even though we didn't have much choice at this point, we kept checking level and we were very close, very, very, very close. And Dave's putting this, the roof together. One thing we did do before we delivered it was cut all those notches in the rafters. So the notches that would accept the front roof wall, or should I say the front wall, and the notches that accept the back wall. So that's why Dave just throwing them right up in place. After we put them together, we realized we needed a couple of more. So you'll see me here in a minute cutting some more notches. looking good and here I am I'm using a jigsaw just to cut notches we, we were too short and you see me uh, putting those couple in and I'm using Paslo air nailer for framing something I don't get to use too often basically a cordless nail gun. Works with an electrical charge, battery, and propane or butane to set off the nail. Yet there you could see his assistants, uh, my client's assistants there were painting the 18 sections in the front, 18 different colors. I think those 18 different colors have something to do with the bees finding their way home. And here I am just finishing up the door we made the door initially, we thought the, the Z was going to face inside, but I just thought visually it looked better facing out, and then consequently the Z is in the wrong direction, so something we're aware of. And the guys with the beehives are starting to get stuff together, and I'm cutting the roof sections. Dave is up on the roof and we're feeding him roofing panels. This is going to weatherproof the top to some degree. And those are, are super thin. I was able to cut about eight at a time just there. So we put one full sheet and then a piece and then one full sheet and a piece. And now this is an altogether another day. So this is a, the fourth. This is actually the fifth day of work, but uh, the first and the last day were only just a couple of hours. And we're just putting in the fascia boards there. And considering that it's all open there under the rafters, we had to put some wire mesh up there to keep the birds out. There's a big concern is birds will nest in here. 
Again, the primary reason for this is so that bears and predators can't get at the bees because there's going to be a lot of honey in there. So this is sort of like a, a bee safe. Just doing some cosmetic details. And the colors look really good. Said they painted that, not me. And here we're just cutting the wire that's going to keep the birds out of the soffits. And I was happy to cut that with the grinder and not have to cut it with scissors. And me and Dave, two man staple team. And you can see how I break that with my leather man. I just twist them until they snap. Took a couple of minutes, but I got it. And we had to put it over the bee holes as well. That's now you can see the shelf inside where the second set of beehives will be up there, right where my hand is. And those beehives get to be about 300 pounds each, full of honey. And those ones on the bottom get more stacks in them, so they end up filling up the space quite a bit. And that's a little lever to keep the door because the wind kept blowing it around. And there we are. That was about four full days of building. And if we had to build it on site, it would have been probably two full days of building, and that would have been it. But considering we built it in my yard, took it apart, moved it, and then rebuilt it, and then put the roof on, a lot of work. But a lot of fun work. Working outside is always nice. And there we go. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.